Okay, so I am trying the sink strainer spinning method again, once again. I want to try it again. I haven't decided if I'm going to do a dirty pour or if I'm going to pour the puddles of color like I did on the last one, which I really loved because it had that great separation of color. But I, what I really want to do is a dirty pour. So anyway, I've got some white, Artist Loft white that is in a cup mixed one-to-one -one with Oetrol and that's what I'm mixing with all my paints is Oetrol Easy Flow. This is like Floetrol but this is the European version so for the people outside the US that can't get Floetrol this is almost the exact same thing. Oetrol Easy Flow water-based latex paint conditioner. They are fabulous in uh, letting me demo their product and I actually care for it a lot more than Floetrol. I have mixed up a navy blue that I did myself. This one is um, Artist Loft Burnt Umber right here. This is a mixed up copper that I had some left of and I think it has silicone in it. I didn't really want silicone but it's in there so so be it. And this is Artist Loft Aqua Green. Then this one I mixed up and I don't have any clue how it's going to dry. PBO Artist Acrylics Extra Fine number 352. So it's iridescent gold and adding the Oetrol to it, it came out just looking like a pale color. You know, like a pale golden yellow cream color. Then I added Pearl X Sparkle Gold number 657. I added a pretty good amount of that. Not the whole little jar but about a third of it. So it's supposed to have some extra fine shimmer in it. So we'll see how this dries. I'm very curious. Then I've got Liquitex Basics Unbleached Titanium. Once again I've got the white. And I have one more color to mix which is Artist Loft Turquoise and I've added white to it and I didn't want a dark dark turquoise. I wanted you know kind of an in-between. So kind of a pale blue really is what I'm going for. So I have not added the float, the Oetrol to it. So I always do like an equal amount of mixture. These are three ounce cups so they pretty much get filled up to the brim. I always mix more than I need. So I think for a 12 ounce, I mean a 12 inch canvas I think it calls for 11 ounces of paint. Let me double check. I keep it on my phone which is always near me. So a 12 by 12 requires 5 ounces of paint. Sorry, I'm, I don't know what I'm thinking. 5 ounces of paint. I don't do things by measurements. I do it more by eyeballing things. That's why I always say one to one on the paint and the Oetrol. If you go a little bit over on the Oetrol, a little under, it's not going to really make a difference in the grand scheme of things. It's more about the consistency of the paint. This is actually I've got, I have put, this is another jug that I had finished up and I put some water in it so that when you uh, rinse out that bottle of paint you still have some Oetrol that's mixed in with that water and you're using every bit of the Oetrol that you can use. So do that in your Floetrol bottle as well. And I keep a bottle of water and I mix 10% Oetrol or Floetrol to the water. So the rest is 90% water and that just mixes into your paint mixture a little bit better. So I wanted to give you that little tip. I learned that from Gina DeLuca which was an excellent tip. She's got some great tips. Another one of her great tips is varnishing canvases with a car sponge from the dollar store wrapped in a knee-high stocking. So you take the car sponge and you wrap it up with the stocking and then you put your varnish on with that and you don't have brush strokes and you, you know, makes it a smoother coat. So I'm going to have to try that. I usually use a sponge brush and have great luck with it but when I saw her idea I thought well hey I'll give it a try. 
So I've got to go out and buy a, a sponge brush and some knee highs. I haven't had knee highs in I don't know how many years. I never even really wore them when they were a thing, but I guess they're still a thing with uh, a lot of people, but not for me. So I have to go buy some. Okay, so all my paints are a little bit on the thick side, and the reason being is I always put too much paint in my cup, and when I add the uh, Oetrol, and by the time I add the water, I don't have enough room for all the water. So they end up being on the thicker side. I thought these would be pretty colors together. So maybe, maybe I will do a dirty pour. Because the colors are pretty vivid and strong on their own. And if I were to add them all together in a cup, they might mute a little bit more and be a little bit more soft. The last time I did this, the dirty pour in the sink strainer, it kind of got like really muddy. So I'm not sure. I will list everything I use below my video like I always do. I tell you what, I'm going to use this cup that has measurements on it. I've used it resin in it. It's got a resin coating inside so it rinses out really well. I'm going to use it instead of the other and that way I can tell how much paint I'm using. I love blues and turquoises and natural colors and metallics together. I think they're really beautiful. So, and it's interesting how the navy blue is rising as I pour the colors in because um, I don't pay attention to densities or anything like that. I just do what I like that's pleasing to my eye. I don't even know if I've used the white or not. I think I have, but I'm not sure. I don't think. So I'm just adding in layers of color, metallics. I don't think I've used much of that gold, so I'm going to give it a good dose of gold. I think... I'll put a little bit more of this greeny color in. The aqua green. Mm, a little bit more navy. So I got more than I need here. We'll top it off with this copper and finish out the copper. You can't go wrong with metallics, right? So I have a really dirty table, but I left it that way because when you're spinning, you're going to probably make a mess. And so I rigged my canvas on top of a piece of cardboard that's taped down to my little Lazy Susan that has ball bearings, so it doesn't, it doesn't go very fast. But I put me a little handle to hopefully be able to turn it and keep it spinning. And I'll try to pour with my left hand, which will be challenging because I'm not very coordinated. But with it being a dirty pour, I don't have to worry about it being in the center or anything like that. And I do want to first just kind of give myself an idea of where the center is. So I'm just going from corner to corner, which my ruler is a 15 inch ruler. It's not quite long enough. But that just still gives me an idea just by eyeballing it where the center is so I can lay my strainer in the center. And hopefully we'll have something here. Who knows? Okay, so 
Here I go, and it's going to be noisy, so I'm going to mute it while I spin. Okay, I managed to keep it fairly centered, which is a miracle. A miracle. So I'm going to let that kind of go in on its own. Just let it settle. Overall, I like it. And obviously, there's cells because I had silicone most likely in the navy or the copper, one or the other or both. And that's what gives the cells. So I'm just sticking a little bit of color on these corners. I would have liked a more separated color thing, but I guess with spinning you can't really do that. I don't know. But I do like, I do like my center point here. So it's gradually going in in the center, which is great. I brought out the torch. I don't use the torch typically. And what it's doing is making a bunch of little dots. But I wanted to just give the torch a try. I do own one. Back in the day when I started the acrylic pouring before I really got into it heavy, I used a torch, but what would happen is it would be close to the table and I would start whatever on, you know, it would start melting, things would start burning, <laughs> my paint would start bubbling. So I have a little bit more control with a heat gun, but I wanted to just pull out my torch just for the heck of it to see if I could generate anything different from my average pours. And like I said, this is selling up quite a bit. So just having that little bit of silicone in the copper or navy has made it all sell up. So um, I think I would like to stretch it a little bit. So I don't know if I can get it off of here because I've stuck it on here pretty good. Maybe I can. Y'all, I know y'all laugh at me sometimes and think, what on earth is she up to? But, you know, I'm, I'm creative. I want to give it a try, so if I don't have something, I just work on it till I can build it the way I want it. This is my makeshift Lazy Susan. And the paint was thick again, like I said, so it's not moving a whole heck of a lot. And I really actually kind of like it. What I would love to do. I don't have push pins under this, but it's on a piece of cardboard. That's I stuck it to the cardboard and stuck the cardboard to my base. I would love to see kind of like I did the other day. But I don't have a lot of this. I've got copper, but it's very spare. So what I'm going to do is put a little in each corner, just for the fun of it. I don't want my pores to be just totally by happenstance. I want them to kind of be intentional in some way. 
like the metallic gold that I mixed up, I wanted it to really show up. And I don't know if it will or not. But I'm kind of doing what I did the other day, but I called it fireworks. So it was kind of like a poor sink strainer spin that didn't really spin. And so I added, I added, and I added until I got it where I kind of liked it. So I'm going to take this. And just kind of swipe, swipe and wipe. I always wipe after I swipe. So I'm taking about half of that one side, half of the other. Just very lightly skimming the surface. Just make sure you're is clean. With me being right-handed, it's always easier for me to kind of swipe inward towards myself or towards the left. I don't know why. Okay, so make sure it's clean and I'm going to try to drag that out to the corner a little bit. metallic part anyway.
This is really pretty color. I added a little bit of deco art color out of a bottle, but it's really shimmery. It is what they call bronze. Dazzling metallics. It says bronze, but it looks like copper. That's maybe what I had in my cup mixture to begin with. So I'm just going to go back and add a little of this because it's so shimmery. Got a fly in the house. But at least fall is almost here and it's starting to, be, to become more comfortable in the evenings. I'm a spring and fall kind of girl. I can't be out in the heat. It just what zaps my energy and mosquitoes love to eat me up and we have had crazy crazy mosquitoes because of the hurricane and all the dampness that it brought with it. We have crops around us. That's not our crops but that's where we live is in the country and so we have all these mosquitoes so it's been crazy. I'm pulling out a straw here. So, you know, it doesn't look like everybody else's sink strainer pours that are spun. Everybody has a distinct look of their own and mine never turns out looking like somebody else's. And that's the thing. People try to swipe like me or, you know, whatever. We all have our unique styles that are very, uh, very much our own. What can I say? It's just like... I'm good at swiping and being a little bit artistic and somebody else might be good at a sink strainer pour. Uh, there's so many gifted people out there that do beautiful ones, but it, I have a really hard time getting it to look like theirs. So what I do is I just make it my own. It doesn't have to look like anybody else's for me to be satisfied, you know? It just has to be something that I really like. Because I'm the one creating it at the moment, and that's what I expect you, the viewer, to do, is just create your own piece that speaks to you. I'm real curious how this gold, metallic gold, will dry, though. I'm done with this one. So I'm going to pick it up off the messy table. There's the center. And because of the silicone or OGX in it, the cells were created and is what it looks like and I'm all good with it. I like it. I think it's pretty. It's soothing. It has a cross-like appearance and I like that. So I'm going to put this aside. This one I'm not going to spin. This is an 8 by 10 so it's not a square. But I'm going to use the same colors because I have plenty of paint. So I put push pins in there. Okay. So this time I'm going to do a puddle pour because I think I'll get more of the effect of what I'm looking for, but I'm not going to spin. I'm just going to see where it takes me. It's so, so pretty in this cup. So I'm going to use these same colors.
I'm taking the very last drips of this um, Ovatrol, or you know, if you're using Floetrol, just sticking it on the edges so the paint will glide better. And I think I'll do brown up to the edge. Stick some light blue. I have plenty of that. Just trying to cover my paint with some, I mean, my canvas with some paint so that the corners are taken care of. This apparently it's going that way just a little bit, and that's okay. So now I'm just going to tip a little bit, bring it back. Tip a little bit, bring it back. And instead of tipping anymore, because I kind of like this oval shape here, I think what I'm going to do, what shall I use? I'm going to use a paper towel. I'm going to take the paper towel that I have, make sure it's a little bit damp. Because when it's damp, it has a little bit more weight to it. And these paints are on the thicker side. Or do I want to blow? Let me see what happens. So maybe I'll put a little cream just to kind of cover off these corners. And trickle this copper color just kind of in between the colors. Copper is really pretty, and I think it's the bronze, the deco art bronze, that makes it that pretty color. Let me just try a swipe here. It's not bad. Still going to tilt it a little bit. Got to make sure I've got paint down on the sides, which I didn't do first. Some beautiful drips on the table, let me tell you. So when you have paint that's not quite gone down to the edge of the canvas, take your finger and roll it. And when you roll it in that existing paint, it will kind of carry that color over. Okay. Super cool. I like it. I don't know. 
Well, I was going to try to tilt it a little bit, but the edges are, are not as thick as the center is because I swiped, so it's thinned out a little bit, and I don't want to tilt it and then lose what's going on here in the middle. So I think I'm just going to leave it be. But i got to make sure i got paint on my corners. i got a lot of paint on this canvas, that's for sure. Get some brown over here. I don't want to lose it if I tilt it, so I need to keep it straight. So here it is, something different. I don't want it to drip on my pretty, my pretty drippings on the table. So I'm trying to keep the drips from dropping. Keep the drips from dropping. There it is. I'm trying to figure out if I want to do anything else to it. That, that is going to keep creeping because it's got so much paint on it. Um, Now, <laughs> I'm going to take these copper cells and bring them out to points just here and there. Kind of like that with the, uh, the points. So yeah, I'm going to stop there. There it is. Let's see. I'm going to use my gold that's in the cup and just pour a little bit of color. Let me get this out of the way. Finish off my colors. Let me put a drop of OGX in the cream color. Stir that up a couple times. Not much. Smells so good. I'm not going to use the navy because I have. The, I need to make a clock with the navy, and I need some of that because I'm doing the UNC colors that I used it for before. So let me see if I can get the rest of this copper out. It is so beautiful. I even squeeze plastic cups. Anything I can do to get the last little bit of paint out of a cup. Okay, so I'm going to swish. I can't remember if I put the pale blue in. I'm going to put a little more. Okay. So. It's always fun to use up your colors. Get my torch. See, I'm notorious for like burning and melting things, so I'm just really careful with the torch. I just don't trust myself. I've burnt myself, I melted stuff and everything, so. These are pretty colors together. They're earthy and soothing, kind of ocean and organic. I don't know. I like the color combination. I'm going to go back this way and then take this brown color back over. 
So hopefully, oh, oh, that copper is like spreading through there and it's very shimmery. So maybe I'll even pour off some of that lighter color. Then what's left in the cup has copper in it too. So I can almost do like a ribbon. So that's really pretty. I'm going to leave it just like that. There's a little bit of copper, there's some shimmer, and there's a little bit of gold. And like especially this area and the darker area, if I can get that to really look pretty, um, it might make some beautiful skins for jewelry. And as you see, I've got my little donut over here from the last sink strainer. And I'm going to lift this one off over here. And there's another little donut. I like these little donut shapes that your sink strainer leaves when you put it down on a surface. So I let those dry and then I pull them up as skins. It's just fun, fun to have, fun to play with. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Make sure to check out all the links below the video. I've got a Facebook group page. I would love for you to come join. I've got Patreon if you would like to do a monthly pledge. It could just be a few dollars. I've got PayPal if you just want to do a one-time donation. I have um, an Arteza link, my Amazon link, which is just full of stuff that I use, and um, my website. Everything I do is for sale. And um, So just check everything out. Follow me on Instagram. Find me on Instagram. I'm Sandra underscore Lett. So I'm there and uh, find me and follow me there and support me and I'll support you back. Thank you so much. Have a great day.